What's going on, Eagles fans? It's playoff time for the Eagles as they get ready to face off against the Buccaneers. This is another episode of the Bird's Nest. Tanner Gilmartin and Max Gretzula. We're going to dive right into this game, Max. We remember week six, the Eagles faced off against the Buccaneers. I was there, unfortunately, saw an Eagles loss. 28-22, Tom Brady threw for 297 yards, two touchdowns, but he did throw an interception. Um, Jalen Hurts didn't have the best game, just uh, over 110 yards, uh, a touchdown and interception as well. He was sacked a couple times too. Maybe going into this matchup, that will improve. The offensive line could be a little stronger as guys like Dickerson and Herbig have gotten a little, little um, more experience um, protecting their quarterback, but Max, uh, some could say this game is going to be a blowout. Uh, you look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, last year Super Bowl champions, um, against a, I guess you could say, like a rookie quarterback in Jalen Hurts, um, not as experienced as that guy on the other side of the field. I believe his name is Tom Brady, um, future Hall of Famer, no doubt. Um, he threw for five. 1,316 yards, 43 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions, while Jalen Hurts, 3,144 yards, 16 touchdowns, and nine interceptions. We could go and compare these two guys all day long, Max, but the real thing is this is not just a one-man game here. This has to do with the surrounding cast of both these individuals, and you look at the Eagles' run game franchise best atop the league they have hurts really leading the uh the rush game 784 yards sanders 754 yards and something i didn't really realize until looking over these stats sanders never found the end zone this season um you look at guys like boston scott jordan howard who were in the end zone scott 373 yards howard 406 yards the bucks run game however has ranked 26th, around the 26th mark uh, in the league. They have Leonard Fournette, play, uh, playoff Lenny, and they have um, Ronald Jones, who um, is also a big part of their run game, but still haven't been as effective as the Eagles' run game has been. But you compare that, and then you look ahead to who these guys are throwing the ball to. Jalen Hurts just has, and let's face it, basically just has Devontae Smith. Uh, you could say Quez Watkins, a big part of the receiving, but Devontae Smith leads all categories for the receivers on this team. But you go ahead and you look at a Buccaneers team. Um, this was the case earlier in the season when they had Evans. They had Godwin, uh, Antonio Brown. Now, Godwin and Brown won't be a factor in this game as much, but Tyler Johnson, Perriman, uh, Scotty Miller will be factors. Um and I mean, and it's it's Tom Brady back there. So he anyone could be out there who he's throwing the ball to. And he has Gronk over there if you're counting that. And you could count Dallas Goddard as a big piece of this uh, receiving game for the Eagles as well. But Max, I mean, I'm going to go over these these last two comparisons, the Eagles and Bucks, and then I'm going to get to you and you're going to tell me what do you think the most important part? Uh, of this game is going to be because you have the offensive line with Jason Kelsey, of course, Lane Johnson, Melata, and then you have a little less confidence in Herbig and, and Dickerson, like I mentioned earlier, but they've been doing their job so far. And really this is going to be their most important game um, and, and proving themselves against uh, Buccaneers defense who we've mentioned with Barrett, Vea, uh, I mean, it, big guys like that who are going to give Jalen Hurts a, a run for his money, that's for sure. Um, Jalen Hurts was sacked 26 times this season, and Tom Brady was sacked 22 times. Um, and you, you think Jalen Hurts, most of the blame on those sacks go for him holding onto the ball a little too long. Um, but for the defense, the secondary, 11th in the league, four yards given up for the Eagles. Um, you have Slay over there who has just been playing outstanding football. Um, but the Bucks secondary, 21st in passing yards, and they've been banged up uh, most of the season. I'm not even going to get into the Eagles linebackers comparing them to the Buccaneers. Um, give the Eagles fans a little more hope 
out of everything I just named, what is the key piece for the Eagles keeping this game at least close? There's so many different ways we can take this with all the different comparisons you mentioned. I think the most important thing is just the running game for the Eagles. What's been their MO all season long, at least the second half of the year, has been the rushing attack with Jalen Hurts rushing the football, with Miles Sanders, with Jordan Howard. If they want to win the game and keep Tom Brady on the sidelines, they're going to have to run the ball effectively. If they don't and they have to abandon the run and Jalen Hurts is forced to throw the ball more than Nick Sirianni would like him to, I think that's just what the Tampa Bay Buccaneers want, and that's going to be the Eagles digging themselves a hole that they probably won't be able to get out of. People want to mention that game back in week six. A lot of the box score, a lot of the people in the box score are not going to be there anymore. You know, you look at the guys who were really effective in that game. OJ Howard hasn't really done much this season. He had a big game and a touchdown catch from Tom Brady against the Eagles. Antonio Brown, no longer a member of the Buccaneers. Chris Godwin injured. Leonard Fournette coming off of IR. Uh, Bruce Arians said he's a game time decision. So if Leonard Fournette is going to miss this game, Ronald Jones, who's already mentioned as out for this game uh, against the Eagles, that rushing attack, Giovanni Bernard will be healthy, but he's more of a pass catching option. So the Eagles, can they get through that defensive line of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Can the offensive line with Lane Johnson and Mylotta step up and be that rock solid unit that they have been all season long? It's it's definitely going to be hard. And Max, you mentioned the players who aren't going to be there um, from week six that were there. Um, Gronkowski, who's a huge part uh, of this offense and especially will be now considering Antonio Brown not playing football currently. And you have Godwin, who had that injury that's putting him out uh, for the season. Brady's going to have to be creative. And we know he certainly can be creative with anyone who's out there. We look at his seasons playing football with guys who aren't known as well and turning them into just surprise weapons. And when I think about that, I think of Scotty Miller and how I watched his first preseason game with Tom Brady when Tom Brady was new on the Buccaneers. And I saw that connection uh, right away. I mean, he likes quick uh, receivers like Scotty Miller. And I think um, the Eagles are going to have to plan for and I hope they have been planning for every option uh, for t- for Tom Brady to throw the ball to because guys who haven't even been in all season he could make um, give them a few touchdown passes. But Max going to the Eagles, we mentioned injuries um, and, and we look ahead to the injury report and see a player that's not on there anymore and that's good to go for this game is Miles Sanders, a player who struggles with fumbles and now what is this two and a half weeks? with a with a broken hand just two and a half weeks uh to heal maybe three um and he's already had those fumble problems I don't know if this is the best option uh for the Eagles I say go with Jordan Howard Boston Scott top of the depth chart instead of putting their starter back in because um I just don't know if I have a lot of confidence in Miles Sanders this might come as a surprise because I know you are a guy who doesn't have confidence in Miles Sanders and I've been trying to get you on the Miles Sanders bus, but for sake of playoffs, for sake of turnovers really will matter against this Buccaneers team. You can't give them more chances. You're already going to be fighting from behind, most likely. Uh, To give the ball to Miles Sanders, to have him maybe fumble the ball, um, not be as, as strong due to that broken hand, it's just not a good decision. Everything's going to be magnified in these playoffs. Any mistakes you make, it's one game. There is no next week. So if a player is to fumble the football, if a player is going to turn the football over, throw an interception, all that is going to be sitting on their mind throughout the entire offseason if they lose that football game. So Miles Sanders with a broken hand. Jordan Howard, people want to talk about his last few weeks as a member of the Eagles in their rushing attack. Hasn't been great. He's been banged up. He's had a stinger. It's pretty obvious he has not been at 100%. So Hopefully, he's able to get healthy with that off week. Uh, I guess you can call it an off week against Dallas when they didn't play the starters. But for Jordan Howard to get that extra week of rest, I think it's big for him. It's big for the team. Boston Scott, He's he, we know what Boston Scott is at this point. I don't think any of us want to see Boston Scott out there over Miles Sanders, even though I don't like right. Miles Sanders that much as a player, as a running back. I don't think he's as great as people think he is. He's better than Boston Scott. If they can have some sort of combination with Howard, Hurts running the football is going to be big as well in this game. And Miles Sanders and uh, their offensive line can continue to stay uh, stout up front. You know, when we talk about what are the keys to winning this game, 
the offensive line doesn't play well, and that defensive line with Vea and Nadam Kinsu, Shaq Barrett's going to play, it looks like, this week as well. Uh, Levante David, a game-time decision in that linebacking core. It's going to be a long day for the Eagles' rushing attack, and I just hope the game doesn't get out of hand early because it's an eight-and-a-half-point uh, favorite for the Buccaneers to win this game in Vegas, and uh, it's it's going to be a tall task for the Eagles, but that doesn't necessarily mean they can't win. You know, we let's talk about, like, the Steelers-Chiefs game. Like, the Chiefs, Steelers, they think they have no shot in winning either. I mean, now I'm not saying it's the same kind of mentality there, but they're both big underdogs. Can, they, can one of these teams pull off an upset? We'll have to see. Yeah, and I'm not saying just completely don't play Miles Sanders. I understand he's supposed to be your lead back and he is not injured, so why wouldn't he play? I'm just saying, uh, and this is more of a fan perspective, I'm nervous for the guy uh, coming back in, hasn't been playing in game time, uh, broken hand still. Um, how's that really going to affect his game with carrying the ball makes me nervous. I think these these carries are going to be more even between each running back. Um, and, you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see how Nick Sirianni is going to coach his squad first time in the playoffs. Jalen Hurts first playoff game. If he completes just what two passes for more than six yards, I believe he has more than Carson Wentz had in his six seasons with the Eagles in postseason. Uh, but Max, what do you need to see from Jalen Hurts in this playoff game to make you say, OK, uh, let's give him another year or two? Well, first of all, I want to see him use his legs. I think it's going to be huge. I think the the Tampa Bay defense is stout up front with their defensive line. But can you get to the outside and can you attack the edges with the rushing game? I think the read option is going to be a huge factor for the Eagles in this one uh, with Jalen Hurts keeping the football. That's what he does best, rush the football. And I will say he's got gotten better as a passer as the season's gone on. Not, uh, no doubt about that. I mean, with the weapons he's working with and the talent or lack thereof, I should say, uh, of weapons outside of Devontae Smith and Dallas Goddard, he's been very, very solid uh, and progressed, which I mentioned on the podcast and on the Bird's Nest all season long. And I've definitely seen that progression. No question in my mind, no matter what happens in this game, he deserves another season as the Eagles starting quarterback. But what I want to see from him in this game, one, keep it competitive. Can they keep it close? The game plan might not be around Jalen Hurts throwing the football. So people want to say uh, when this game ends, if the Eagles are in that loss column, they say Jalen Hurts only 14 to 24, only 190 yards passing, no passing touchdowns, maybe one rushing touchdown. I mean, people are going to say, eh, you know, shake their head. That's not great. That's not great. But maybe the game plan for Sirianni is, hey, we're going to hand the ball to Jordan Howard 15 times. We're going to hand the ball to Miles Sanders 12 times. We're just going to pound the rock. So, you know, you know how Philadelphia fans are. They're always going to find, uh, you know, something negative, something positive either way uh, surrounding a football game. So Hurts. From a quarterback position, I would like to see him have at least one passing touchdown in this game. I think that's my big thing. Can he have a passing touchdown? I'll be satisfied because I think the rushing attack is going to be the focus. But, hey, maybe when they get towards that goal line, can they get a screen, quick one out there to Dallas Goddard, quick one to Greg Ward like we saw, I believe, a couple weeks ago in that Washington game, Greg Ward with that great catch. But uh, I want to see him throw the football uh, accurately. I don't need to see him throw it 30 times, but 20 times with a high completion percentage. I would like to see get the ball out quickly. Yeah, definitely. I mean, of course, the goal is to go into this game and win. But if that does not happen, you want to at least look back at the stats and say, OK, he played well in his first playoff yeah. game, hopefully. And um, uh, they are able to pinpoint the exact position that they need to improve on. And what I'm already looking at is a veteran wide receiver for next season. Uh, you go into the draft, that's a whole different can uh, with linebackers and such like that. But Max, I mean. Eagles fans, they're going to have to pull those underdog masks out from under their bed that they had uh, during that Super Bowl season. And it's it's going to be a challenging game, but it's definitely going to be interesting. Hopefully it's interesting. This is the seventh seed versus the, the two seed, um, the defending champs, Tom Brady um, going against um, the Eagles in playoffs. Again, we remember what happened last time on um, that whole storyline. Of course, you've had questions in the media to Tom Brady, why he didn't shake Nick Foles' hand. You got to love everything that's building up to this game, yeah. definitely making you excited. And I know us two are excited for that one o'clock kickoff on Sunday. And that's going to wrap up this episode of the Bird's Nest. Tune in next week. Hopefully it's not our last episode next week.